Hey, 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 it's your girl Evelyn here, and I'm back with another video. And in this video, if you can guess, it's about self-care. And I thought I would do this video. I got a wonderful care email from one of you saying that you missed me on YouTube. And I was like, you know what? Let me go ahead and film a video. I have been so busy living my best life that I haven't been sharing my best life. So anyway, in this video, I want to talk to you about for not so much talked about things in the self-care space that are important to any self-care routine and are almost like the precursor to a quality self-care routine. And so I found that, you know, you see a lot of posts talking about how, you know, take a nap, you know, drink plenty of water, um, you know, do a bubble bath, you know, uh, binge watch a series on Netflix. And I think all of that is really, really cute. But raise your hand if you've ever followed some of those self-care tips. And then after that, you still needed additional self-care. Because I know when I was first getting into the self-care space, I was going for your kind of run-of-the-mill self-care tips. And I was like, this is cool. And when it was over, I still was either equally as stressed or exhausted or I was stressed during the process trying to force myself not to do other things. So I wanted to come to you with what I did and what I think will be beneficial to you as you are continuing in this self-care journey. So the first things first, and you guys know I always have my notes over here. So if I'm looking to the side, girl, you know it's because I got these notes, okay? The first thing is you want to get rid of what I have deemed micro stressors. And micro stressors are those things, they're all those unfinished little things that are stressing you out that you need to get done that you haven't really paid attention to because it just seems like the to-do list is super long. So let me give you an example. So I needed to renew the registration on my car and I had let it expire and I was like, oh, I need to do that. And it just kept slipping down on my to-do list. And so next thing you know, I'm riding around in a car with an expired res registration. And so every time I saw a police officer, I was like, mm, I need to register my car. And then I would get home and I'd go on about life. And, you know, time went on and I was like, Evelyn, like this is stressing you out. You don't even realize that just, just go to the place and get this done because it was my year to actually go in so I couldn't renew online excuses 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 right and so I didn't even realize how much this was stressing me out until I resolved it and realized that the anxiety and the stress that I was feeling every time I was driving every time I saw a cop car all of these things was something that I could have eliminated a really long time ago. So I, would, I want you to consider what are things in your life? That's just one example. I had several things like that, right? And they all don't have to be, you know, related to like car maintenance, but they could be other things in your life. Maybe it's a, you need to text somebody back because it's been three days and you forgot to text them back. And now you're like, oh, the longer I wait to text them back, the worse it's going to get. It's like, just call them back and eliminate that micro stressor, right? So think about all the micro stressors in your life and just start to kind of check them off the list. And I guarantee you, you will kind of feel this weight lifted off your shoulders when you eliminate these micro stressors. The second thing that I'm going to encourage you to do, which was what I had to do, is I then had to start working on what I call the macro stressors, the major stressors, the things that were kind of like constantly in front of me that I was like, I may not be able to do this all in one task, but I at least need to be on a path to eliminating this. It's like, how do you eat an elephant, you know, one bite at a time, right? So I want you to think about those things in your life that are major stressors and get them on the calendar and then break them into smaller tasks of things that are going to move you progressively to eliminating them off your list. For example, I really was like, Evelyn, you've kind of had your head in the sand about your health. You know, you weren't, I wasn't working out at the time. I wasn't taking supplements. I wasn't doing anything. And I was like, you know what? Let's just, this is a major stressor. It always comes up in the back of your mind. You've got to take care of your body. What are you doing? Let's get on a plan, right? And so it wasn't like, oh, I'm going to lose X amount of pounds overnight or I'm going to do this. But it was like, okay, step one order your supplements. Step two, schedule, you know, your follow-up appointments. Step three, join the gym. Step four, figure out what your eating plan lifestyle is going to be again, 
right? You know, step five, get an accountability partner. Step six, what's going to be my workout routine? What kind of workouts do I want to do, right? What's going to be um, my body care, all these kind of things. And so I just started going down the list and then saying, these are just going to be a part of my life. What's going to be my system for my supplements? Am I going to put them in a pill box? How often, how many do I need to order? Which ones do I need? All of these kinds of things. And so that was an area of my life that was a macro stressor. It was a big stressor. And so what I did was I just started putting things on the calendar that are forcing me to pay attention to it. So as of, as of this the recording of this video, I go to the gym five days a week. Am I at my target weight? No, but I'm also not really as stressed about it as I was because I am actively in the process of pursuing that goal. So am I taking my supplements? Yes. Have I made doctor's appointments? Yes. Do I have accountability where I'm working out? Yes. Do I have it scheduled in the calendar? Yes. Right. And so now I don't feel like I'm ignoring it or sweeping it under the carpet. And so now it's not a stressor. Now it's just a part of my regular everyday life and I am moving closer to that goal. Okay. So that's also a form of self care. Now, the third thing that you want to do is you want to submit yourself. <laughs> you may not like this, but this is, this too is a form of self care. You want to submit yourself to something that makes you uncomfortable. And I know you're like, how is that self-care? Follow me. It makes you uncomfortable, forces you to be disciplined, but is getting you closer to where you want to be in a certain area of your life. Okay. So I'm going to give you an example. I was like back to the health journey. So I was like, I'm going to work out. So at first I was like, oh, I'm just going to go to the little dance classes at the gym. And, you know, and here's the thing. There's no accountability there. You can't be really seen there. Right. So what I did was I signed up for some additional um, classes that I had to pay for. They were at six o'clock in the morning. So I have a six o'clock specialty workout in addition to a class I take on Tuesday, in addition to a class I take at 530 in the morning on Fridays and then Mondays and Wednesdays. I kind of do my own free workout. Right. And let me give you just a little insight. The class on on Fridays at 530 in the morning and the class on Thursdays is six is probably two of my most challenging workouts of the week they're at the end of the week they're early in the morning like it's just not that but I'm telling you the feeling that I feel from making it and being consistent right is amazing keeping a promise to myself okay moving towards my goals and there's something about being disciplined and consistent that really does something for the way you view yourself and how you feel about yourself that is powerful and so that is a form of self-care so not only is the physical activity a form of caring for my health and for my body but also being disciplined being consistent being held accountable is a form of self-care and I will tell you you know some of my friends we looked in our life and we were like we're not responsible to to anyone or accountable to anything really in our lives like even if you work a job you you could choose to go somewhere else right um and so I was like you know at this age like I need to find ways to willingly submit myself to places that require me to be disciplined that uh, require accountability require me to show up require me to be seen and require me to do what I said I was going to do and so what's great about it is I'm starting to meet people and they're like Evelyn come on like you got goals right and it, like the feeling of just keeping that promise to myself is fantastic so I encourage you to think about an area in your life where you really want to grow but you know well all areas of growth require discomfort let's be honest but pick one that's really really at the top of your priority list and then put yourself intentionally in an uncomfortable situation that requires you to be disciplined and watch how you change okay and then last but certainly not least is one of the things I had to realize is that I have to plan for play consistently I had to figure out, A, what did play look like for me as a woman in my 30s? What does play look like? And I can tell you, for most of us, play is not sitting and binge watching a show on Netflix. We may enjoy that, but that's not necessarily play. Play is also not scrolling through our Instagram feed for hours on end or scrolling through Facebook for hours on end. That's probably closer to numbing. I had to figure out what are the things that I really, really enjoy doing and how do I get those in consistently? 
So I have more than one, but let me share one with you, which is I really, really love to dance. I, I love music. If you know me in real life, you know how I feel about concerts. You know how I feel about independent artists, underground artists. All t- like you know how I feel about that I love it and I love to dance so here's a couple of things that I do in that area of play if my favorite artists are coming to town I'm booking tickets no matter what every single time I'm book if I can I'm booking tickets no matter what but then even outside of that because I can't really control that I have realized that every week I need about a 30 minute to an hour dance break I need to tur- crank the music up in my house and I need to just hit it one time, one time for the one time. Okay, like I just need to, hey, body roll, body roll. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just kind of, I, I don't know what the young kids do. Listen, but for me, when I go an extended period of time and I don't drop it like it's hot one good time, listen, Evelyn is not fun to be around, okay? And it took me years to realize, like, I need to dance on some frequency, I used to dance all the time um, growing up. And then I remember when I first got out of college and I was working in corporate America, I had actually started taking like actual dance classes at a dance studio. Right. And, you know, I'll take dance classes at the gym, but those are kind of more aerobic. Like I just wanted some good old fashioned, let's break it down type dancing. So plan for play consistently plan to put it on your calendar, block it out. 30 minutes, an hour, whatever you need to do. And uh, yeah, y'all, I'm excited. Um, Let me know, what else do you want to learn about self-care? You guys can tell that I'm really, really passionate about this subject because I've had to spend the past three years really learning how to care for myself as an adult in true, in what real care is and uh, I'm encouraging you to do the same so share this video with someone that you think it would benefit let me know your thoughts in the comments below like what are you going to do to plan for play what are some micro stressors or macro stressors you need to address and I will see you in the next video peace